Okay, hello everyone. Um, oh, hang on. Um, hi everyone on the web. Um, I'm Nicole Jans. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Nottingham um, in the UK. Um, I do research on human rights, um, human rights and business, um, corruption with my colleague uh, all the way in the back, Dalcin Figueiredo from uh, Brazil. Um, and I handle a lot of difficult data, missing data, um, data that doesn't want me to work with it, apparently. Um, so um, this paper is, uh, I've written that together with uh, Jeremy Fries, who I don't have to introduce anymore, because you've seen the, um, the keynote yesterday. Um, so I noticed at this conference, but also at other conferences, whenever there is a replication study being presented, one of the first questions in the audience is, did you contact the original author and how did they react? And probably some of this is related to we all like a little bit of gossip, um, but also I feel it reflects a little bit the, a culture of is this witch hunt, is the replication police coming, do original authors get really stressed and sweaty when uh, someone would uh, send them an email and say we are really interested in your work, great. <laughs> Uh, we want to replicate it. Oh no! So um, this talk is uh, going to be about um, how replicators on origin and original authors talk to each other, and how uh, you can um, develop a replication study um, that uh, avoids uh, this, let's say, culture of fear. Okay. So um, who has not seen these articles about the psychology? Uh, replication crisis, yes, so this is a report about um, uh, 200 uh, psychologists who tried to replicate 28 studies um, and only half of them uh, could be replicated and have the media response to that. This is uh, the case of the Lacour scandal in political science, that's my own field, um, where a graduate student um, published a study in science about how door-to-door um, -door campaigning can change people's minds about gay marriage and equality. And it turned out later, when someone else tried to replicate the study, that the data had been fabricated. And this caused kind of a similar scandal in the political science world, and it made it into the New York Times and other media. So there are a lot of scandals and crises uh, uh, shouting um, uh, about um, replication issues. So what I learned from this is that um, I think replications are important. Um, they help us to advance knowledge. They help us to uncover misconduct. Um, they help us to build on previous knowledge. Um, but at the same time, uh, people are really hesitant um, to run replications, and people are really hesitant to be replicated. Um, so this is a slide that I uh, borrowed from Florian Markovets, a cancer researcher at Cambridge. Um, uh, the, if someone uh, sent you an email and said, I want to replicate your study, you might get really stressed about it. You may not think the replication police is coming or the bullies are coming to get you, but it still kind of causes um, some concern. And I think this is something that is definitely happening in political science. People get stressed. People think that there's a witch hunt happening, which uh, I don't think does, it doesn't have to be that way. If we look at Bert's study, which was excellently done, it really doesn't have to be that way, but somehow this culture of fear is hard to shake. Um, so in the old world of replication 1.0, what we often hear is um, that a replication can make or break your career. Either it failed and then you may get uh, you know, a shitstorm on social media, uh, or your replication may have been, the replication of your work may have been successful, but then that may just end up in the file drawer because which journal is going to be so interested in, in that, right? In a new world of replication 2.0, let's say, maybe we could talk about replication more in terms of overcoming obstacles in your particular field of methodological challenges, challenges with data management, challenges with um, running particular studies. So more like a collective effort. There's still some sweat involved, but a different kind of sweat. Um, so this is what the aim of this paper is, to kind of argue that replication should be a collective effort to improve science, and authors and original authors should talk to each other in a way that doesn't perpetuate this culture of fear. Now, very quickly, I know that there's different terminology out there on uh, replication, uh, conceptual replication, direct replication, all these things. 
Um, I distinguish duplication, where you use the same data and the same methods to verify the claims, versus full replication, which tests the robustness by using different data and different methods and extending the original study. So this is the big distinction um, that I make here. And if you are a replicator and you get different results from your previous, from, from the original study, if you have basically done a duplication, uh, obviously those reasons are more knowable because you have tried to use the same data and the same methods. So these could be honest mistakes by the original author or an honest mistake by the duplicator, by yourself. Um, it could also be that the original study was a bit opaque in terms of how they portrayed or they described their methods. So if they had been more transparent, maybe it would have been easier to duplicate the results. Um, or the difference in results between duplication and original study could be due to chance as well. So I would recommend actually if um, to any original author or any author, duplicate your own study, give it to someone else before you submit it to a journal because you can then avoid the problem of someone else not being able to get to the same results. Now, once you start changing uh, the data and the methods, this is a whole other story because Obviously, the results may be quite different. Um, if you use a different measure for democracy or human rights, you may just not get exactly the same result. Um, so here, the reasons can be a bit more mysterious or, let's say, complex. Um, different methods, better methods or not. Your methods as a replicator may not be better. They may just be different. Um, it could be that the original study was actually valid within the narrow context but it, what it probably did wrong was to not say that there is this limitation and people would have thought, oh, we can generalize, but actually you can't. Um, and again, there could also by chance be some changes. That kind of always comes into play. So when you are a replicator, you have to, and this is what Bert did perfectly, you have to describe exactly which steps you took and which changes you made, which then according to your interpretation as an also an expert in this field may have led to changed results. So how do authors and original authors and replicators talk to each other? Um, I looked at a few replication chains. So a replication chain is when you have an original study, someone else duplicated or replicated it, and then the original author would comment back on that. It was not so easy to find them because in political science, the tendency is that you wouldn't write replication into the title. So there, I had a hard time finding reanalyses or studies building on previous work. But those, they are out there. You just have to look for them. So this is um, what I found. This is what replicators say. Um, replicators say, for example, we find that coding errors, selective exclusion of available data, and unconventional weighting of summary statistics led to serious errors um, in the original study. Or, maybe a bit more harsh, if we cannot even reproduce the original results using the same publicly available data, there is no need for further commentary. Now, this is how original authors then answer to the replication. Uh, they would say things like the replication or duplication, whichever is the case, is less realistic, inconsistent with the substan substantive literature, and of limited utility. Or the replication is fundamentally flawed. Or statistical, computational, and reporting errors invalidate the replication's inclusions. So they hit back hard. Now, what can we do about that? How can we change uh, that dialogue to, to being more constructive? I like the idea of a more constructive replication. Um, and basically, you can use BERT study as uh, a template. Yeah? So if I wanted to kind of make this part of my talk really short, do what he did. Okay. So transparent planning. You have to have a clear aim if you do a duplication or a replication. Um, and then when you start planning it, you have to be extremely meticulous and extremely transparent. Why have you chosen that study? Did you already think there might be an error in there? Because that creates kind of a bias already against that original study. Or did you randomly choose it? Um, have a clear methods and data plan, pre-register your replication, 
Um, I didn't know that people do that. It's uh, excellent that people are actually already doing it. Um, so that you can avoid accusations of massaging the data so, so, so that you can get to a failed replication. Um, and obviously cross-check um, your duplication or replication before you submit it somewhere else. And be an expert, so make clear that you are not some amateur replicator trying to bring down a big name, but you are also working methodologically and theoretically well embedded within the literature, so you have a contribution to make other than just cross-checking existing work. Second point is uh, rhetorical sensitivity. So um, Jeremy and I talked about uh, that maybe it's a good idea to stop talking about failed replications, but talking more about a spectrum. Because just because one um, regression in this particular study didn't replicate doesn't mean the whole study uh, is a complete fraud or anything, right? So it's really important to present the diverging results bit by bit, step by step, and very carefully. And I would probably try to avoid that big term failed replication. Um, second point is don't make it personal. I saw in a few replication chains that the replicators would say, Professor so-and-so claims in their study that da-da-da. And why not just say the study's name, right? Uh, it would be so much easier to do that. And so professional uh, courteous, collaborative language, uh, instead of confrontational, like we saw in the examples, would be, um, it's an easy thing to do, I think, but it would change the culture and the dialogue. Um, yeah, also, make clear what the contribution of the original study was. You wouldn't have picked the original study if it was some unimportant study. It is a study by a good researcher who uh, tried to answer a really important question, and I think if you acknowledge that, um, you can do some good here. Um, and then, let's remember, honest mistakes are human. I'm pretty sure I have errors on my study somewhere, and um, I try to be transparent, and if someone finds those errors, at least I can always say, yes, I'm human, but I, I didn't try to hide my data. Um, yeah, and finally, what I also would like uh, for all of us remember that um, the replication, just because chronologically it came after the original study, doesn't mean it is better or it can make the final judgment on that topic. It may just be one of many different looks at that topic. Um, so um, it's a co one other contribution to knowledge, but not the final say on, uh, on a particular research question. And good replications really discuss how, coming from the replication, you can now move the literature forward and build on this further. I've tried to put this into a grid, um, uh, similar to the TOP or top guidelines, um, just because people seem to be familiar with it. Um, this is something that I did last night, uh, being inspired by all these uh, different talks. Um, so this all kind of reflects what I've already said, study selection, research design, pre-registration, and there is a spectrum from level one to three, so it's not just good and bad replications, but there is some in between. Um, this one is something that people always kind of disagree. Do you need to inform the original author or not? Is it your responsibility or not? Um, should you invite them to collaborate with you on the replication or not? Is it a good, ide good idea or is it maybe could it introduce bias because they have a stake at not refuting their own research? Should you invite them to comment on your replication before you submit it to a journal? Maybe submit it as a joint package? So this is something that I've, I don't have a clear answer on this, but I think you'd have, if you wanted to run a replication study, it would be good to think about that and to make a decision why you want to pick, let's say, level one through three. Okay, so here I have an example of a very nice um, constructive replication um, in political science. Um, what do constructive replicators write? Um, this is not a critique of existing papers, which faithfully report careful studies. Rather, the replication uh, replication with a different event, sample, and time is a way to move the literature forward to assess robustness. So you can immediately see the change in the tone. Or 
What the replication has done should not be taken as definitive evidence that the ex extant literature overstates the extent of irrelevant events, that's a particular research topic, yet it serves as a cautionary prompt to the next generation of work. So this is much more constructive and much more friendly. Um, now, this is a replication study. So these quotes are taken from a replication study conducted by uh, Busby and Druckmann. Druckmann, uh, 2018. Um, the only thing that made me kind of think, should I use this example or not, is they actually replicated themselves. So they were very constructive and friendly to their younger selves. Yeah. So when I, when I saw this, I said to Jeremy, oh, should we just take out that example? But no. It's a great example because it shows how you should approach replication studies. Replicate it, replicate others as you would like to be replicated yourself. Yeah? So this is kind of our golden rule. If you forget everything else I said today, uh, this is the one to remember. Replicate others as you would like to be replicated yourself. Think of the original authors as your younger selves that you may build on the, your own work. Now I have uh, probably one minute left or so. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, do a tiny, tiny bit of promotion. I'm a fellow at Project Tier at Haverford College, um, close to Philadelphia, where all the people are now scared of maggots. Um, so they are running a faculty um, that is, was a reference to Bert, um, not to you as a maggot, but to your study. So they run a faculty development workshop in Oxford. Um, this is where they train the teachers. So the idea is if you are teaching replication or uh, reproducibility, transparent workflows in your classroom, and you want to discuss this with other people doing the same thing, or you just want to start out, uh, you can apply to this. Uh, you can also come and talk to me on the, in the coffee break. So I'm running this workshop. Um, and the other thing is that I can really recommend um, if you are engaged in embedding these kinds of open science issues in the classroom, you could become a tier fellow um, where you can network with other people doing the same thing. Um, you would go to two conferences in Haverford and uh, they are really nice people. We are writing grants together and um, I, we even found some overlap in our research other than open science. Um, and so also you can come and talk to me in the coffee breaks if you want to know how, what it means to be a, a tier fellow. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nicole. Questions? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I wonder um, if you have some information on whether once a failed application is published, whether um, researchers continue to um, cite the original study or do they cite both studies? Because um, I once heard um, Ivan Orarski from Retraction uh, Watch saying that uh, even if um, so there is evidence that uh, even if a study is retracted, it will still continue, uh, still continues to get um, citations. So people don't check for this kind of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes. So obviously, it would be good to cite both studies and to give a bit of a nuanced picture when you cite a, a finding from a previous topic. There's a bit of a difficulty in knowing if a study has been replicated. And this has been mentioned before uh, from, uh, by the people from um, the Open Science Center at the LMU in Munich. Um, if you don't know that there has been a replication, how are you going to cite that or point it out? So I know there is, for example, the replication wiki at the University of Göttingen that collects, um, currently collects uh, economics replications so that you would know it. Um, but it hasn't been extended to, let's say, sociology or politics yet. So that's the first problem. You may not know there is a replication out there. Um, but you are absolutely right. When I looked at um, those replication chains and I looked at the um, citations of the original study and the citations of the replication, and then I, at the citations of the answers to the replications, 
it seemed random to me. I didn't do a systematic study, but the original author, obviously, also it's a longer out there, had more um, citations, but um, the, uh, the um, replication and the answer to the replication had way lower uh, citations in general. So, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoyed reading your paper, and uh, I think I'll use it as a, re as a teaching tool as well. Fantastic. I have one uh, comment and a question. So my comment would be, um, what I like to do in replications is run a different study alongside this replication where I expect a similar effect size. So I can show that I'm a capable researcher if I expect the null effect for the, the effect of interest. And mm -hmm. so that might be something you can also include. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That would be the comment. The question would be, I mean, I'm trying to be very nice and productive in my um, collaboration with the original authors, but I can still see why it's scary for them. I can still see that it's very scary to be not replicated. And so do you have any suggestions on how to, for, this, for us, for the, for the system, to maybe make it easier for original authors to participate in replications? <coughs> So you mean for original authors to participate in replications as in being replicated? Yes. Yeah. Um, the problem is, yes, there can be one person that is very nice to the original author, but there can be another person or a scandal uh, that just cre recreates the culture of fear all over again. So I'm very ambivalent about scandals. Scandals really help to push the discipline to discuss things further and to take topics seriously, but also they perpetuate this culture. And it could be that you are being very nice or Bert is being really nice uh, to the original authors, but the reflex would still be there. So my take on it uh, for this paper is uh, other than doing a proper replication study that is transparent, language really counts. Um, and I would probably not call the media immediately. But I would maybe try and see if I can find other people also replicating a similar study or working with the authors to, to kind of, we need to find ways to make it a collective effort of knowledge improvement and not singling out a person. For example, I've been thinking for a long time now if I st should still show the slide of Michael Lacour um, because he was a student, he was under high pressure, uh, he wanted to become an assistant professor, uh, he did get an offer from Princeton which then was withdrawn, and he is now, you know, a person wanting to work. Um, um, and so, should we always call it the Lacour scandal? Should we maybe rephrase what we're saying? Should we, you know, use other words to say these things, um, to not always point out the name of that person? That's maybe not really fair and helpful. So, I think language really does count. Okay, let's collect questions. I have actually three here, so actually starting with Bert. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. It's actually more a suggestion, but I don't know where you want to go with this paper, but I could be, find it very interesting to, if you could interview or survey some people. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Druckmann would be positive about, uh, uh, but other people, like I've seen also in my own department how these reflexes, it could be really interesting to have some of that either qualitative or quantitative in the paper mm -hmm. uh, of sort of what was my first uh, reflex because I've seen people be really angry mm -hmm. and then there's sort of a period of deliberation and then it's sort of tamed a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that might be a way of supplementing and, and enriching it even further, mm -hmm. but a great, I, I really look forward to reading yeah, this. For sure, thank you. Yeah, th uh, thank you so much for your talk. Um, I think it's very interesting, it's very uh, good work. Uh, and I agree with you, for example, that calling replications fail is, uh, uh, doesn't work. There's a nice paper by Richard Mori and Daniel Lackens on this. But three, three critical uh, things. Mm -hmm. So first you say, um, when you show this nice slide of the levels, that it's good or it's, it's bad that there's a bias um, of the replicators for, uh, I mean, uh, trying to replicate an interesting study. Um, but I, 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 so I wouldn't call it bias, right? I mean, there's an interesting study, you want to replicate it, uh, and you set yourself up in a way that you're not biased by pre-registering the replication and so on and so on. So, so I, I don't agree with that. You also say that the last study shouldn't be definitive, and, and I agree with you, but you seem to suggest that the, the earlier study and the last study are somewhat on an equal playing field. But it's simply not true. I mean, the previous study was probably made in a climate where we didn't know about p-hacking. We didn't know the issues with low power. Uh, uh, so, and, and the third one is, you seem to suggest that uh, constructive means being nice, uh, but 
uh, there's sort of this asymmetry of bullshit, right? So, and, and taking this example of the previous replication, um, I, I, I think it's, it's not constructive to, to try to perpetuate these mistakes. Like, it's, it, it should, it, it, one should clearly say, okay, the previous study had this, these errors, um, and uh, we should move on. Like, it, it's, it's not constructive to then try to talk around, which I think the previous speaker also actually did uh, a little bit. Because, I mean, the original study uh, talked about physiological traits and didn't even report the, uh, the data on that. So uh, I think that's irresponsible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just want to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, it's a good idea um, to... Bert, what was your question again? Oh, yeah. Um, doing a survey of... Um, Kind of how people react. Yeah, so I had a, I have a, a well, a, a grant proposal that uh, got rejected and it's sitting around in my folder, which was an idea where we uh, do an experiment where we send a, a kind of th th threatening email to um, original authors <laughs> asking them to share their data because we want to replicate and double check their results. And the less threatening tone email just uh, saying that, I don't know, this is for a class project, this is just purely to learn statistics, would they share their data, and then see how they react. So obviously that, you know, you could also attach a survey and like build on this. Um, it didn't get through uh, for the grant that we applied for because uh, kind of the uh, idea was, yeah, we know what people are going to say, so why do you run, have to run the experiment? But on the other hand, I think to sh show to the community that the fears are there. We can't just talk them away. Um, maybe it would be good to, um, to actually follow this up again and have like some actual proof of how people physically react with pain when they get such an email. So yeah, I totally get that point. Um, and thank you for suggesting it. Um, so the other three um, points. Um, I do think when you, so I, I taught a course um, for a few years where students replicated a published paper. Um, they duplicated it, they replicated it. And um, we had a lot of the longest uh, kind of um, amount of time of the class went into selecting a study. And um, some students had the impression, oh, we'll just t take one of these bad studies and replicate it. And if everyone did that, or if there was people thinking, we just pick bad studies to be replicated, we create a distorted view of, of how good research is in our field. So this is where the idea is, was coming from, is that when you pick a study for the reason of thinking it's bad, that someone else could say, well, yes, we'll see a lot of bad replication, or failed replications if you keep picking bad studies. Um, I think you can still do that, because if you are interested in a particular topic and you just really want to work on this topic, why should you not pick the study? But then, then <clears throat> sorry, um, you have to be very clear about how you pick that study in your replication or in your pre-registration. Pre I heard a lot of discussions about why not randomly pick studies in a larger project, which is uh, about level three, to, make, to kind of make the selection bias problem uh, to kind of mitigate that a little bit. So this is where this was coming from. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, con I'm just confused about y your motivation here, because I agree, for example, that replicating BEM, this web paper, would be a huge waste of time. Uh, it's stupid, and we know it's not going to replicate because there's no theory. Um, but I, I think people should replicate stuff because they have an impact on the field and they distort the science, right? And if, if, if lots of bad studies are such that they distort the field and they should be replicated, then I mean, why not? Like, why, why would you pick them at random? But anyway, we can yeah, talk about so, later. Okay, yeah, so the, the definitely the point, my motivation is to avoid the ex accusation against replicators that they are uh, having biases and are distorting our view of science towards the negative. But uh, we can talk about it more in yeah. the in the break. Yeah. The other two. Uh, the the yeah, I forgot the third so one. The second one is that last study being limited. It was just yeah. a better. Uh, so the first study probably was done in a climate where there's lots of peak in power and so on. So clearly, I think our prior should be okay. The last study being more better, more definitive. You seem to suggest that there should be an equal playing field. And the third one is mm -hmm. about trying to be extremely constructive towards the original authors, but there's this asymmetry of bullshit, right? Yeah. That, that I think is not constructive to keep talking around. Okay. So I think, uh, in, in short, um, 
I think you can be critical, but you can do it in a professional manner that doesn't, it will always hurt a little bit, yeah, but that doesn't um, kind of lead the original authors to feel really embarrassed or make them feel they have been doing, uh, they have been trying to conduct, mis to do misconduct. I think this is very nuanced, it's very difficult when you talk about what is the right language. It's right to say there is an error here, for sure, um, but writing a new title, this replication failed and scientific misconduct is on the rise, that those are two different things, right? Yeah, so definitely being nice doesn't mean to kind of, then you, they, what's the point of replicating? Yeah, but I think you can talk um, constructively. Um, and about the chronologically, uh, the chronological order of uh, replications, I mean, most people that replicate don't pick a study from 30 years ago. They, you usually pick a relatively recent study. And I think that there hasn't been such a big change yet in political science between five years ago, p hacking five years ago, and p hacking now. So anyone could really easily and or, say that the replication has done some p-hacking as well. You know, wh how do you know? Well, they pre um, yeah, so if they pre-registered, yes, there's less of a chance. So you're kind of building a little bit of a wall against that ac 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 uh, accusation. But generally, I do think that just because you did a study later than the other study doesn't mean you are necessarily better. You may have taken a different approach. But it doesn't mean just, you know, why should the younger child be more clever than the older child or something like that? I don't, uh, or the older child. So I don't, um, yeah. I don't believe that. And again, this is about phrasing. This is, this is about, just because you are a replicator, you are not the, f you are, don't have the final word on this topic. That is kind of the idea that I had. But yeah? speaking of final words, the speaker will have the final word there. <laughs> and the rest can go into the coffee break. Thank you. Thank you very much.